here is what I can only describe as someone that the Banished value highly. Noted. His bio is interesting. If you want to see for yourself, it's waiting for you in the database. So Halo Infinite has some high value targets that we can choose to take out in the game. In this video, I'm going to be showing what happens when we take out Akro Bagadun, aka the Blade Master. I'll also be getting into his backstory as well. Consider leaving a like on the video sometime if you find this enjoyable. That'd be greatly appreciated. But yeah, let's go ahead and get into this. This guy will be one of the first high value targets that we'll get to encounter in the campaign, actually. One of the first FOB bases we take over will be informed of the Blade Master. And here's what it states about him. For the last decade of the war, Akro Vagadun was considered one of the most lethal infantry assets in the Covenant and was granted the title Blade Master by the Minister of Resolution for his combat acumen and ability. The target is known to carry as you can see, an energy sword. So, yeah, let's go ahead and see what happens when we take this guy out. Akro Vagadun is nearby, Chief. Be careful, he's got quite a rap sheet. Thousands of UNSC personnel died at his hands. Time to make it right. Okay, so, as you can see, there he is, right down there. He is a stealthy one. As soon as he is alarmed, he will be camouflaged, and it'll be kind of difficult to actually locate. The camouflage does work pretty well in Halo Infinite, I will admit. But yeah, as you heard as well, he has been known to take out thousands of UNSC personnel. We can actually locate one of their bodies before dropping down to fight him, and next to this soldier, we can find a rocket launcher that we can use against him. So yeah, let's go ahead and pick up this spanker here, and let's just go down here since we're on normal difficulty and take out the Blade Master with ease. HVT down, but we still got threats to finish off. And as you heard, when we do take him out, we'll be notified, letting us know that we got him, and he'll drop his sword. As you can see, it's labeled Duelist Energy Sword. So this isn't your typical energy sword that you'll find around in the game. And what makes this special is that it allows you to move significantly faster. You can also jump higher with it. So you'll be able to get to your opponents easier because you'll be able to move faster, and you'll be able to jump higher. The range of the lunge is also much further, and standard energy swords too. So if you're a fan of energy swords, it's definitely worth it to take the time to come here and get your hands on this unique energy sword in the game. You might have also already noticed it is a little bit different looking than a regular energy sword too. It seems like the blue is a bit darker than usual. And also, once you do get your hands on it, you'll be able to select it at the FOBs you take over. As you can see here, I'm able to now just get it out whenever. So if you run out of ammo with it or anything like that, you can just easily get it right back by going to an FOB base. So yeah, pretty handy to know. Also, here's what's said when we finish up the mission by taking out his crew as well as him. Targeting crew eliminated. Life on this ring just got a little safer for the UNSC. Hey, did you get a look at that modified weapon the target was carrying? Pretty inventive, even for the banished. So I copied it. I've sent updated schematics back to our forward operating bases. Should give us an edge. I'd suggest sending a thank you card for the upgrade. But you killed the intended recipient, so we can skip that part. So yeah, that's what's said when we complete that mission for taking out that high value target. And you get an achievement as well if you haven't eliminated one before. But yeah, lastly here, I wanted to get into a bit of lore over him. As you can see, if we go over to targets and then go to his data, it states that he was killed in action. And it lets us know a bit more of his backstory. As you can see, it states, For the last decade of the war, Akro Vagadun was considered one of the most lethal infantry assets in the Covenant, and was granted the title Blade Master by the Minister of Resolution for his remarkable combat ability. Vagadun hailed from a long line of sword fighters and repeatedly defied odds, surviving even when vastly outnumbered. When the Covenant fell into dismay at the hands of the Prophets, he returned to Subin, the blood moon of the Sanghelios, 
and his birth world, where he was approached by Atriox with an offer to join the Banished. Only after a year of watching his own people fall to civil war, he agreed. Since then, Vagadun has fought exclusively for the Banished as part of the Blood Brave, a sect of highly esteemed warriors from his homeworld. But yeah, I guess that about covers it for Acro Vagadun, aka the Blade Master in Halo Infinite. Hopefully you found this enjoyable. I'm out of here, everyone. Thanks for taking the time, watching, and listening. Until next time, peace.